top run. It is at $15,769.33 out of the 20,000 goal. And we only have two runs uh, before uh, that run can potentially be played. So you're going to have to get your donations in fast. We have the Task Bot plays item abuse three. And then after that, we have Super Mario Brothers, the lost levels. So you're doing a good job with your donations, but you're going to don't, gonna make, have to make a donation push to get the Super Mario Brothers 3 run in and let uh, both Pooh and Mitch have their revenge. We have $60 from Zadok, who says, in honor of TaskBot, this is a frame-perfect donation. We have $30 from Shadow Dart, who says, good events, GDQX. Can't wait for HDQ 2019. We have $10 from Clever Dad, who says, great job to all the runners. Looking forward to getting that Super Mario 64 120 star run. And it looks like we are ready uh, to have TaskBot play Item Abuse 3. And welcome back. This is even more insane. It's gonna actually going to be hard for you to say everything you need to say as yeah, quickly it, as you need to say I it. I cannot physically talk this fast and explain all these tricks. It often comes up, what is the hardest Super Mario World ROM hack of all time? And a really good case could be made for this. Item Abuse Absolutely. 3 by Pangea Panga. All right, uh, we're going to start this off. Three, two, one, go. Okay, first of all, I can assure you this is not possible for humans. You cannot do this. In fact, this was designed to be a challenge to TAS. So even with Frame Advance and all the tricks that uh, TaskBot uses, it still is a challenge to figure out how to put all these things together. You're going to see a lot of, well, item abuse. And that uh, refers to objects that Mario can hold and interact with. And because the relationship is kind of glitchy between the two of them, uh, it creates some weird things. So the first thing we're going to do is play with shells, and right about there is where a real player could probably get. It might be theoretically possible to beat that first level, but there's already so many frame-perfect tricks in that already. And so keep in mind, uh, moving shells you can get a jump off of. Non-moving shells are inactive, and you can't get a jump off of them, and that's going to be really important later. But first, we get to play with this key, and we're actually going to skip a bit of this room. This is not even the intended way to task this room, but by being able to stand on the key, it works as a platform in the air. <laughs> just sit back and enjoy. This is amazing. So we're setting up for a rope glitch right now. Uh, if Mario is holding a rope and gets pushed off of the rope, uh, it, the game will just continue to think that he's still on a rope. And that is what's happening here, because it looks like we're dead, but no, no problem. We're just jumping through the air, because that's normal and fun and cool to do. Uh, you don't necessarily see the rope grab, uh, grab uh, animation, but it happens so quickly. But you're definitely that's wise, because he's jumping, uh, jumping off a rope, because the game still thinks he's holding that. This is one of my favorite situations. OK, so the baseballs kill you. Uh, the coins, the directional coins up there, are being controlled by inputs. Uh, you don't want the grab block and the disco shell that you're riding down there to collide, because they will destroy each other. And he's going to set up a couple of things to these uh, dotted outline blocks are invisible Kaizo blocks. And he's overwritten some of them with regular invisible blocks that you can stand on so you can pass by. <laughs> no problem. You so see why you can't get here as a human. This, this is, I assure you, this is physically impossible for humans to do. Also, take a look at the inputs, and you'll see. So the cape is one of the most broken things in this game. First of all, when you, uh, you can hold an object and fly backwards like that, uh, if you have your cape puffed out and you touch something, you just get iframes. You don't actually lose your cape. And I think he's just going to, yeah, just goodbye, baby Yoshi. See you later. Yeah, this is not even the intended method. So now we're going to do something really cool. He's going to get in there and going to double boxes. And now he's generated uh, extra Yoshis. So keep in mind, he's riding two Yoshis right now. And we're going to use that shell poofing trick again. So he's eating the poof animation from the shell. He's got one Yoshi, but he's riding another one. So when you ditch the first one, the second one appears. So this is my favorite section. This is, this is poetry. I, I, this is how I wish I could play in my dreams. We're going to be using shells. Uh, all over here. So the first thing you're going to notice is a lot of the left-right movement with the shells. Um, that is abusing the fact that when you're holding a shell in one direction and you turn left or right, uh, there's a brief moment where the shell's hitbox overlaps with Mario's hitbox. And if you throw the shell at that time while the hitbox is overlapping, the shell becomes active, so it's moving, so you get a jump off of it. Now keep an eye on that yellow shell to the uh, right there. We're going to need that later, so we kind of get to kill a little bit of time to make sure that shell stays with us on the screen and doesn't despawn. All these jumps off the P-switch, they're all we call it a yump. Uh, and it is a frame perfect uh, trick. The contact pressing jump, the first frame that you contact uh, the top of the P switch. That yellow shell gets left behind, but don't worry, there's more shells. 
And these double carries uh, with shells you'll see coming up here. A couple of drops and another sort of non P-speed midair right there. Don't worry, the yellow shell's still here. Taskbot just has to do a little wall clip uh, jump to keep it up. Now, so the shell is just sort of going left and right like this. That's actually left-right inputs, uh, like I said, abusing the fact that the, during that left-right, the shell's hitbox and Mario's hitbox overlaps. It's just it's so fast that it's hard to see um, the actual left-right turn. And that's what we need the yellow shell for. Brought it all the way from the top. Yep. So now we're going to do a little bit of swimming. Uh, these double item carries uh, underwater are a task trick, and uh, pretty much everything in this section kills you. Wa water levels are horrible. He wants to wait for that charge and chuck to jump out of that little crevice there. It sort of hops toward you, and the P-switch to open that gap, and now everything dies. Off to the right. <laughs> the shell's going to open up those rotating blocks by hitting them, and he's going to need to kick that shell in so he can get inside that channel. Swimming through that gap uh, is not humanly possible. And just clip right through that corner and get in the door, no problem for Taskbot. So we're going to see a lot of block duplication in this section. Uh, by, Like I said, by hitting a block with a shell, you're tricking the game into thinking that you're hitting that same block, but in an adjacent spot. And keep in mind that that can overwrite blocks. All these outlined blue blocks that you see, those are Kaizos. They would be an invisible coin block. Uh, they turn into coins when the P-switch is active because they would be a brown block, which would turn into a coin. So you're going to see uh, Taskbot, especially right here. Notice on the right, it's blocked off by those skull death blocks. He cannot get through. So what Taskbot's going to do is duplicate these rotating blocks and overwrite the death blocks so he can jump through. Now the frame perfect jump again off the P-switch and the brown blocks turning into coins. Just a couple of emitters. I think those were just for fun. I think Taskbot's just showing off at this point. And this is just some regular task trickery to get through. Uh, there's really not even a lot of, yeah, just pretty, pretty standard, honestly, if you can even say that about a task. Duplicating these note blocks again. He needs that little nutch in there to jump and stand, get a, get a jump. Oh, hey, it's Yoshi. I bet we'll take him with us this time, surely. He's a good buddy. Uh, if you're bouncing off Yoshi, Yoshi won't sink in the lava uh, if you're not standing on him. Hey, he just, just left him there. Did, did he sink in the lava anyway? No, he'll just stand there forever on the lava. Okay. So this is pretty cool. Notice, um, all these shells will hit the Big Boo. So the Taskbot is being really careful to not... Uh, overlap Big Boo while he's active with a shell because that will register a hit. He wants to nudge that yellow shell up there off the platform and get it. Meanwhile, he's using two shells to juggle and stay alive in this section because he will die. So there's the first hit on Big Boo. Now he's got a clip and now he's into a spin jump. And you can spin jump on those Eeries. Uh, keep in mind, again, task, inputs, or task time ends at the end of inputs. So we're going to end inputs a little bit early here. He set that shell up on the right side, and that's going to kill time. time. And wait for the Big Boo kill. Dead. Yeah, there you go. And that is it. That is item abuse three. And who did the tool assisted speed run? Who was the author of this? Was that I who was Oh, who was the author of this? That was I cannot pronounce his name. X H X H F Zero One X. And this level Very was, great work. And this level was made by Pangea Panga. Which is amazing. The one and only. If you watched this video on some later recording and you don't have the context of some of the tricks that were done, watch the Kaizo Mario World 3 that we just did. I'd like to, on behalf of the entire Taskbot community and the entire Task Videos community say thank you for watching. You can find more information about tool assisted speedruns at taskvideos.org. You can find more information about Taskbot at taskbot.net as well as our Discord server at discord.taskbot.net. Of course, Dwango AC on Twitch and all the other various sites like YouTube. You know, I'm not supposed to say that at TwitchCon, but uh, I'd like to say thank you specifically to the crew that was here on site with me, which includes GlitchCat, Cheese05, we have TyKevin83, Stump, a few other folks that swung by. Thank you to everyone that makes this possible. This concludes the task block for GDQ 2018. Thank you. Well, thank you for that very entertaining uh, task uh, block, uh, Dwango AC, uh, Ty Kevin 83 and crew. It, that was great to watch. A lot of donations, and we are getting pretty close to Super Mario Brothers 3 Co-op. It's at $16,350.33 out of $20,000. The only problem is that there is only one run in between uh, changing that setup block to Super Mario Brothers 3 Co-op, and that will be the our next run, the Super Mario Brothers Lost Levels with uh, Big John. So you got to get your donations in right now if you want to see that uh, co-op run. And we have $150 from Rota R Ratilbo, who says, All right, Pooh, this is it. The biggest night of your career. Sitting side by side with Mitch. Not as a rival, but as an equal. You know what to do. 
Stomp hard and stomp late. I don't know if the stage can take it, so please. <laughs> anyway, we have a $25 donation from Schmullus, who says, Love Task Bots Kaizo 3 Run. Got to keep the Mario block going and get Pooh and Mitch, Mitch's makeup tour underway. And I will be signing off as your host, and I will be putting the mic on Sky Bills. Welcome back to GDQX. I am Sky Bills, and I will be your host for the Super Mario Brothers, The Lost Levels, and perhaps uh, the bonus game for the setup, SMB3 Co-op between Grand Poop Hair and Mitch Flower Power. So far, so far, we're going to make it. I have a feeling we're going to do this. So right now, we're at $16,465 out of 20000 Chat. We know we want to see the return of Pooh and Mitch. I've been seeing it in donation messages all day. Let's make this happen during Big John's run. And really, no better of a person, really, to try to reach that goal with Big John playing Lost Levels. It's a classic. So I believe in your chat. We can do this. We'll do it together. Let's believe, and let's reach that goal. And with that, we have a start of uh, $50 from Picante that says, Go Big John. Show Lost Levels who's boss. We have $50 from SRC Code who says, donating to see MFP Mitch Flower Power and the People's Champ reunited at another P GDQ. And of course, a mention of the famous Poo Stomp. Ooh, we have a $750 donation from a few exhausted Twitch staff. Thank you, Twitch. Appreciate that. This is only the beginning. And Twitch staff says, working TwitchCon is exhausting, but GDQX is perfect for chilling out between shifts, and we love you. Thank you, Twitch staff. We appreciate that. Kalazi donates $100 saying, it's stomping time. Fango donates $25 saying, John, then poo, then cheese? What a lineup. Got to see that SMB3 incentive met. Stomp that donate button, people. <laughs> 